Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Mask Equalizer, a Photoshop plugin which allows you to manipulate luminosity masks with extreme ease. In this first video we're going to cover its basic aspects starting from its launch. You can open the Mask Equalizer plugin, go into the Window menu, then Extensions, and then picking it from the list of installed extensions. Before we go into the details of the plugin, I would like to remind you what a layer mask is and how it works. As you see, this image has two layers. There's an image of two white horses on the background layer and a funny gradient on top. When the gradient layer is in normal blend mode, 100% opacity, it covers the underlying layer completely. There are several ways to change this state of things, but the one we are interested in is the use of a layer mask. We can create a layer mask on the active layer by clicking on the proper icon at the bottom of the layers panel. The mask can be thought as a grayscale image embedded in the document, and it is not visible by default. Notice it was created white. If we Option Alt click on the mask, the layer disappears and we can inspect the content of the mask. It is very boring, a completely white image. Now let's pick a brush and paint in black on the mask. Then let's select a medium grey and paint in grey. Alt Option click on the mask again and the view goes back to normal. But something has changed. In the area where we painted black, we can now see the horses. In the area where we painted grey, we can see a blend of the two layers. The rule, therefore, is in a layer mask, white reveals the layer, black makes it completely transparent, grey creates a partial transparency, and the darker the grey, the more transparent the layer becomes. A leap forward is made when we use some kind of luminosity structure to create a mask. This is a typical high key image. Most of it lives in the highlights and there is no real shadow point. One of the problems with these images is that the highlights may not have the detail we would like. A common way around the problem is duplicate the layer and set the blend mode of the copy to multiply. This darkens the shadows, though, so we usually want to restrict the effect to the lightest parts. A common way to do it quickly is go to the Channels panel and Command click on the Composite channel or on any channel if you wish to use a different luminosity. This creates a complex selection and, if we go back to the Layers panel and create a layer mask with such selection active, the mask automatically becomes a grayscale version of luminosity. Let's Alt Option click to inspect it. It is dark where the image is dark and light where the image is light. Therefore, this mask restricts the effect to the lightest parts of the image for the principle we just explained. Usually, a mask like this needs to be blurred by quite a few pixels in order to avoid posterization, but nothing else is needed. You've just seen one of the many, many uses of the ubiquitous luminosity mask. Let me now explain how you can obtain a similar effect with mask equalizer. I deleted the layer mask and went back to the original situation, a background layer and its copy multiplied. First, notice that the plugin has two operating modes, which we call Compact Mode and Full Mode. You can change the mode by dragging and pulling the bottom of the plugin. The Full Mode reveals more controls, namely three sliders called Contrast, Feather and Density. In this example, we will need one of these, so we start in Full Mode. Do not mind the aesthetic results of the operations I'm going to make, because some of the masks I will create are not suitable for this image. This is just a demonstration. You have four presets named Shadows, Midtones, 
highlights and shadows and highlights. If you want to mask the shadows and we want to do that, simply click on the shadows preset. This is the mask it creates. That's the main of it. The darkest parts of the image are dark. The rest remains either very light or completely white. We can alternate between the mask and the composite or comp view by clicking on these buttons. This is very useful to have an idea of what the image becomes with a given mask. The current results in comp view do not use any blurring. That can be applied by means of the feather slider, so that's why I suggested to start in full mode. This is what happens if we apply midtones and highlights. We can always inspect the mask if we want by clicking on the mask button and notice it is feathered, that is, blurred. This is Shadows Highlights. It masks both the shadows and highlights. It is like midtones inverted, if you wish. These are presets, but they can be tweaked by means of the seven vertical sliders. Left to right, you go from shadows to highlights. The position of the sliders reflects the name of the preset. Shadows, for instance, masks the darkest shadows by 100% and the neighboring luminosity area still very dark by 80%. In this case, we want to probably add another luminosity area by, say, 60% or so. This is the result and this is the mask. You can always check how the mask is working by clicking on the on-off button. This is the basic usage of the plugin and, as you see, it is very easy. Further capabilities like that of using individual channels as luminosity sources and what the contrast and density sliders do will be explored in an advanced tutorial. The process doesn't involve going to the channels panel and no direct manipulation of the mask is required. In the next video, we'll put the panel to work and see what it can do in the hands of an expert user.